Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, VSS Unity flies with propulsion systems installed and live. First flight VH-92A presidential helicopter, an Airbus Perlin Mission 2 reaches new high altitude. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's August 9th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The sixth glide test of Virgin Galactic's VSS Unity was conducted in Mojave, California last Friday, and for the first time, the propulsion system for the suborbital spacecraft was installed and live, but not engaged, according to Virgin Galactic, with the exception of the rocket motor fuel grain called the Case Throat Nozzle, Unity flew with all the spaceship's principal propulsion components on board and live. This meant that the Unity took off with her forward pressurant tank, loaded with helium, and for the first time, her centrally positioned main oxidizer tank fully charged with nitrous oxide. As planned, the pilots tested the venting of the nitrous tank while still mounted on the carrier aircraft. The procedure proceeded smoothly as even Unity climbed past 40,000 feet and approached the drop point. After a clean separation from EVE and an approach to standstall test, Unity's tail booms were raised into their re-entry position for the second time in flight. Once back into the normal glide configuration, the pilots used the descent to execute the remaining test points, including a high-G pull-up maneuver and bank-to-bank -bank rolls. Unlike the previous glide test, the water ballast in the rear tank was not jettisoned, allowing us to test the spaceship's performance with a heavier landing weight and a center of gravity towards the back of the vehicle. A VH-92A configured test aircraft in support of the U.S. Marine Corps' VH-92A Presidential Helicopter Replacement Program completed its first flight on July 28th. The start of the 250-hour flight test program taking place at Lockheed Martin Facilities in Oswego, New York. The aircraft achieved its first flight and later that same day completed a second flight at Sikorsky Aircraft in Stratford, Connecticut. Total flight time for the two sorties was one hour and included hover control checks, low speed flight, and a pass of the airfield. As the flight test program proceeds, this test aircraft, Engineering Development Model 1, will be joined by an additional test aircraft over the course of the 12 month flight test program. The H 92A aircraft is based on Sikorsky's FAA certified S 92A commercial aircraft, which recently surpassed the 1 million flight hours mark. The VH-92A will enter into service in 2020. The VH-92A will transport the President and Vice President of the United States and other officials. After the break, Airbus Perlin Mission 2 reaches new heights. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aerold-news.net. Airbus Perlin Mission 2, an initiative flying a glider without an engine to the edge of space to collect groundbreaking insights on climate change, weather, and high altitude flight, recently reached a new high altitude in its second season of flight testing in El Calafate, Argentina. Pilots Jim Payne Morgan, Sander Koch, Tim Gardner, and Miguel Itamendi have soared the pressurized Perlin 2 glider in a series of flights reaching a maximum altitude to date of 32,500 feet. El Calafate, in the Patagonian region of Argentina, is one of the few places on Earth where a combination of mountain winds and the polar vortex 
create the world's highest stratospheric mountain waves, rising air currents that Perlin pilots believe can eventually carry their experimental aircraft to the edge of space. Over the next two months, the all-volunteer exploration team sponsored by Airbus will seek for the rare waves in an attempt to break the world gliding altitude record of 50,727 feet. Set by Ian R. Innevoldsen and Steve Fawcett in Perlin 1 in 2006. With some 3,000 Aerial TVs program, webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aerial TV classic episodes. Sure. Well, you know, we've always been a little bit different type of aircraft company. First of all, it starts with us being based in Switzerland. We're the only aircraft manufacturer in Switzerland. While at NBAA base held in November 2016, ANNCO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell talked with Tom Aniello, who is the Vice President of Marketing for Pilatus Business Aircraft, is aware that the Pilatus PC-12 seems to be a product that has been around for quite a while and is going strong. In this video, you'll hear why this is the case. Search a Pilatus Aircraft Update, a unique kind of aircraft company on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, U.S. Army bans Chinese drones. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Department of the Army has discontinued use of any Chinese-built drone leading to the grounding of UAVs it had acquired from drone giant DJI. According to the memo, due to the increased awareness of cyber vulnerabilities associated with DJI products, it is directed that the U.S. Army halt use of all DJI products. This guidance applies to all DJI UAS and any system that employs DJI electrical components or software. Three instructors have renewed their master instructor designation in the month of July, with one being named a Master Emeritus. All obtained their designation through the Master Instructor Fluid Review Program online. Professional aviation educators who earned or renewed their master title during July 2017 are Anne Margaret May Godlewski, Lakewood, Washington, Master CFI, Master Ground Instructor, Karen Maid Khan, Santa Barbara, California, Master CFI Emeritus, Helen Dahlman, Pat Knight, Argyle, Texas, Master CFI, Matthew Pope Robbins, Matt McDaniel, Oak Creek, Wisconsin, Master CFI. Pilots learning to fly at Cessna Pilot Centers experienced a new era of flight instruction. With the now paperless training system developed by King Schools, instructors can bring the course tracking application right into their cockpit on their iPads. A new app provides up-to-date student progress, lesson plans, and tracking tools. The FAA and EASA have awarded type and production certification to Williams International for the FJ44-4A-QPM engine and production deliveries have begun. Two of these turbofan engines power the new Pilatus PC-24 super versatile jet that will begin deliveries later this year. Two men have been charged by Australian authorities with trying to place a bomb aboard an Etihad Airways flight departing from Sydney, Australia last month. Police said that the plot, which was unsuccessful, was directed by ISIS. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. EAA Chairman Jack Pelton is adamant that turning over control of ATC to a nonprofit largely controlled by the airlines is a bad idea. In an editorial written for The Hill, Pelton said that the plan put forth by House Transportation Committee Chairman Bill Schuster is not privatization in the true sense 
of the word at all. Such privatization, he said, would mean applying for-profit principles and benefits to a market opportunity with the goal of enhancing choice, efficiency, and freedom. This proposal does none of that. It simply creates a corporate monopoly largely under control of commercial aviation interests. He said that the arguments that the plan would make air travel less expensive, faster, and safer don't stand up to close scrutiny. Pelton writes that when looking at examples from other countries, privatizing the air traffic control system has led to a sharp drop in GA activity. Canada saw sharp fee increases to cover fixed costs when the economy slowed, and that led to even less revenue when GA pilots cut their flying hours. The UK turned to a taxpayer bailout when flying fell sharply after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Pelton says he is concerned about reduced access for GA pilots to airports under a privatized system. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aerol-news.net. Keep flying. We'll definitely see you tomorrow.